and yet all these years after Marilyn's death, her luster is undiminished. She remains the ultimate celebrity icon, the most renowned and desirable blonde bombshell the world has ever seen. But why is Marilyn still the best loved and most recognizable screen legend on earth? Nick Kent, executive producer of a documentary to mark the 60th anniversary of her death, says that in the last six decades nobody has really challenged Marilyn's status. He adds, there is still no one to touch her. The beauty and sex appeal she had at the time are equally powerful now. Her attraction is universal. She's been embraced by the gay community, too. There's something about Marilyn that is incredibly resilient. Another factor, Nick believes, is that we lost her too soon. She really died at the top of her game, with her beauty and her sex appeal undimmed, he says. A lot of stars, James Dean, Elvis, died young, but some have lasted better than others. Marilyn has lasted exceptionally well. Finally, she represents a genuinely glamorous period when the modern-day concept of celebrity was just getting started. It was a very alluring era, says Nick whose documentary covers the famous 2016 auction at Julian's in Los Angeles that raised $11 million from the sale of more than 1,000 items from Marilyn's life, from the happy birthday, Mr. President dress and the gown she wore on 1959 blockbuster Some Like It Hot to menus on which she scrawled her career ambitions. Marilyn, JFK Frank Sinatra, The Rat Pack, that era is Western capitalism in all its unbridled, sexy, full-on power. Her fragile beauty inspired pop artist Andy Warhol, who created iconic images of her in the 1960s. And her vulnerability was captured by Elton John and Bernie Taupin in their moving ballad Candle in the Wind. Although she was often misogynistically viewed as a dumb blonde and a victim of manipulative men, in many ways Marilyn was in control of her own destiny, taking charge of her career in a way that was unusual for the time. And what is rarely appreciated is that behind the flirty manner and the sex bomb image, she was extremely intelligent. She is widely reported to have had a genius level IQ of 168 and men underestimated her at their peril. Time magazine called her a shrewd businesswoman. She struck a groundbreaking deal with 20th Century Fox in which she won the right to choose her own pictures and directors. She was also one of the first women in Hollywood to start her own production company. There's a kind of brazen independence about Marilyn, says Nick. The interesting thing is that she is a sex symbol, but she's also a feminist icon. Look at the way that she controlled her career and set up her own production company with its own checkbook. She died a few days after she got a million dollar deal with a Hollywood studio. She was at the peak of her powers. She was a woman who absolutely took control of her own life. Would you characterize Marilyn as a victim, or as a freedom fighter, battling for women's power and independence and status in a business that, let's face it, is remarkably misogynistic and sexist? Marilyn certainly scored a memorable victory for independence in 1952 when, as a rising star, she rode out a press storm as nude photos she had posed for in 1949 to pay the bills came to light. She toughed it out at a press conference. When a journalist asked her, what did you have on? She replied blithely, the radio. Far from wrecking her burgeoning film career, her smart handling of a potential disaster made her an even bigger star.
Professor Sarah Churchwell, author of The Many Lives of Marilyn Monroe, observes, she became famous as the first major Hollywood star to survive a nude scandal. Marilyn was the first to say, yeah, it's me. I took nude photos, and Terry's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to apologize for it and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. And guess what? I'm still a movie star. Initially her acting skills were as underrated as her intellect, even though she eventually picked up a Golden Globe for her performance in Some Like It Hot. She was actually a very fine actress, says Nick. In Gentlemen Prefer Blondes in 1953, she was up against Jane Russell, who was a massive, massive Hollywood superstar at the time. Marilyn came out of nowhere and just blew her off the screen. Her movies have actually dated really well. When you look at Some Like It Hot, it's still one of the best comedies ever made. It's incredibly entertaining. It's one of those films, like It's a Wonderful Life, that you can show your kids now. The thing about Marilyn was that it wasn't just about her looks. She was also a phenomenal talent. Marilyn was exceedingly canny and deliberately crafting her image, too. After seeing her in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, fellow actress Ellen Burstyn says, I remember being just astonished that a girl could be so sexy on purpose. She revolutionized the female image. No one had ever done that before. Monroe reached the high point of her global fame on May 19, 1962 when she gave a spellbinding, breathy rendition of Happy Birthday, Mr. President, in possibly the most celebrated dress of all time. She had to be sewn into the nude effect gown, crafted from sheer silk and adorned with more than 6,000 crystals to sing for John F. Kennedy's 45th birthday at Madison Square Garden. Edward Meyer from Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum says, it's the most iconic dress of the 20th century. It combines pop art and politics. It ties it all in beautifully. Darren Julian, from the auctioneers who sold the dress six years ago, agrees. People are mesmerized by seeing it, he says. It makes people cry. Very few artifacts in our lifetime have that effect on the public. When the star removed her first all on stage and appeared to be almost naked, the audience audibly gasped. Bob Mackie, who helped legendary Hollywood couturier Jean Louis design the dress, admits, it was based on the idea that Marilyn would be absolutely nude with just diamonds on her as she walked out. Professor Churchwell emphasizes the seismic impact the dress had on the night, and continues to have. It caused a sensation, she says. Lots of people to this day who haven't seen any Marilyn Monroe films have seen that footage of her singing in the dress that one historian described as skin and beads. Nick underlines how compelling that moment remains. She looked absolutely incredible in that dress. But it's not just how she looked. Singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President in that way still gets a reaction. It still makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. So seductive was Marilyn's delivery of this song that it immediately sparked rumors that she and JFK were having an affair. They endure to this day, it was the apogee of her celebrity. And yet tragically, just three months later, she was dead.
the totemic nature of the dress is surely the reason why Kim Kardashian became the only person apart from Marilyn to wear it when she used it for a three-minute appearance on the red carpet at the Met Gala in New York in May. Kim, 41, was accused of damaging the dress, which was bought by Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum at the auction in 2016 for a record-breaking $4. 8 million. The reality TV star, who had to lose 16 pounds to get into it, denied tearing it. The fact that she was so keen to channel the sexiest woman of all time is easy to understand. Kardashian is obviously a very astute manipulator of the media, Nick says. She was probably hoping that some of Marilyn's stardust would be sprinkled upon her. Of course, Marilyn's life was not a story of unalloyed happiness. She never knew her father. When she was eight, her mother was diagnosed as a schizophrenic, and the young girl spent the rest of her childhood in various orphanages and foster homes. Marilyn's luck did not improve as she got older. She married at 16 and quickly divorced. Her second husband, baseball great Joe DiMaggio, beat her up in a fit of jealousy after her famous billowing dress publicity shot for the seven-year itch. She went on to have several miscarriages with her third husband, the equally possessive playwright Arthur Miller. Marilyn seemed to have it all, but she always struggled with inner demons. She had no sense of stability from her childhood, says Professor Churchwell. Then she went to Hollywood, an environment that was going to exacerbate all her anxieties. She was often isolated and lonely. Despite dying so young, Marilyn managed to bequeath a stunning legacy. She left us a wonderful filmography and a unique, timeless and dazzling persona, which inspired other artists. As her friend Ellen Burstyn concludes, I never really met anybody like her. There was a sweetness about her. She never played dark characters. She was like a sexy angel. A luminous character, a radiant being. And, six decades after her death, Marilyn continues to shine her light on us all. Marilyn Monroe, Auction of a Lifetime is on PBS America at 9. 55 p.m. tonight, and streaming on Freeview.